telling you prisons in England and Wales could be full by Easter and the government is considering releasing some inmates early to relieve the overcrowding. The Justice Secretary, Alex Chalk, has revealed that the plans to deal with the backlogs throughout the justice system, among them a new remote Crown Court. Well, let's get more on that. Joining me now is Steve Gillian, General Secretary of the Prison Officers Association. Um, Steve, in terms of overcrowding, how bad is it at the moment for staff and for the prisoners themselves? Well, Jane, firstly, thank you for inviting me on. And it is uh, absolutely critical levels now with over 88,000 prisoners. Uh, it's been this way for quite some time now. It's, it's not happened by accident. It's more than happened by design, quite frankly, over the last so-called 30 years, if, um, if, if I can say that, f for the simple reason that going right back to the 90s with Michael Howard on Prison Works as a slogan, with Tony Blair with um, his slogans as well, tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime. And it seems to be a political battle just to put as many people into prison as possible. And that's created a time bomb that uh, we're now seeing trying to unpick. And I feel a little bit sorry for Alex Chalk because he hasn't been in the position that long. He's had some tough decisions to make uh, and he's had to make them because it's quite simply, uh, we're near enough at lockout now, quite frankly, uh, and uh, there's no other way around this but, but to release uh, some prisoners. Uh, and I know people don't like that happening, but if I can be controversial, we do need um, an adult conversation amongst all political parties on this and have a grass and roots review by way of a royal commission into what the general public really want from a criminal mm. justice system. I mean, fundamentally, I, I think what the general public wants is lower lower rates of reoffending yes. and, and less crime. And, and the, the question is, do, you know, does, does, does prison solve either of those things? Jane, I think you're absolutely right. And I think prison would resolve it if we had manageable numbers to manage, quite frankly. And, and we haven't. We've got... If, if you actually take back in uh, the early 1990s when Strangeways uh, had the riot, they were talking about mass overcrowding then and with a prison population of 43,000, with, with more prison officers than what we've got now, looking after double that amount. So we've got to make up our minds in Britain what we actually want. And I say Britain because they've got the crisis in Scotland as well, as in Northern Ireland with a prison population. But we're specifically talking about England and Wales at this minute in time. And I've got to say, we've got to fully understand the, the general public are quite right, and victims must always come first. But prisons shouldn't be for the likes of non-payment of fines uh, and things like that. And people should be diverted away from prison as well, where, men, where they're mentally ill. Uh, we've got the IPP prisoners that get no signs of release, even though the Justice Select Committee have said there's 3,000 of them, you know, uh, with no sign in the future of them actually being released. So we, we need to do something about it and political parties need to come together. I know there's a general election this year, but it's my members that are suffering. It wasn't that long ago I was on here talking about violence against my members and prisoner on prisoner. And we've got to the dizzy heights now where violence has increased by 195% since 2010. That's a stain on our society, quite frankly, Jane. Do you think, though, it is something that, that captures the public's imagination? It, it, is it a, a really big factor on most people's minds? Most people seem to, to be very concerned about the cost of living, the economy, education and health. Yeah. I, the prison service is probably quite low down the list on a lot of people's minds when it comes to the election. Look, I, I've been around this, this trade union and been a prison officer myself. This is my 34th year around the criminal justice system. And I recognise... Uh, prisoners will always come bottom of that list that you've just mentioned, where it's schools, policing, fire service, nursing, uh, teachers, etc. Yet yeah, the cost of living crisis, uh, and but we can't just keep locking people up and throwing away the key. We, we, you know, we've got to have a strategy in this country that actually rehabilitates people and keeps people out of prison, because. What we're doing at the moment, there's a building, there's a prison building program for the future. By the way, they shut 20 prisons and they've only opened up six. But now there's a building program in place that's going to cost four billion pounds. Now, surely to God, that money would be better spent on other things in Britain rather 
than locking up unnecessarily, and I'm not talking about your murderers, your rapists or your violent criminals, but your petty criminals, surely there must be community sentences because it's costing £47,000 a year to keep the average prisoner in a prison cell. That's what it's costing the taxpayer. Do you think it acts as a deterrent? Do you think people are scared of going to prison these days? No, no, because I think the discipline has gone out of prisons, uh, Jane. Uh, I, I think um, we're not in control as we once were because the numbers have got out of control. Um, prisoners are, aren't even getting the basics either, quite frankly. You know, some of the conditions are squalid, we know that. Uh, you see that in the Chief Inspector of Prison reports. But the reality is, when there's a, a little bit of capital investment into the prison service as it is, take Liverpool, for example. Liverpool is living proof that if you actually have the capital investment and the structures in place, it can be a successful prison rather than the overcrowded, rat-infested place that it once was. Well, there we will leave it. Steve Gill and General Secretary of the Prison Officers Association, thank you. Thank you very much.